All right, so you see that little white squirming thing right there in the middle of the screen? That is a baby millworm. And he is tiny. There are some even much tinier than he is. Uh, it's always nice to see these guys because um, there's literally thousands of them in here that have just hatched out of their eggs. Um, which is a good sign for people like me who have many geckos that they need to feed. Just to give you a little perspective, we're up this close looking at that. And it might go out of focus, but in reality, it's a pretty big bin um, full of frass, but there you go. So what we basically have here is a large tub, uh, it's probably a medium sized tub, it's a good size uh, compared to my hand, it's a pretty decent size, it's a 56 quart, which is perfect for this kind of stuff, but what I've done is I've cut out the uh, portion of the top with some screen for some, a lot of ventilation so there's no mold going on in here, and what we have here I'm not going to mix these around, but there are literally tons of beetles all over the place. And um, put little pits of uh, cardboard and all sorts of stuff you can see. So these guys, I don't know if you can see, I'll try to find a few. Uh, if you can see right there, there are a few actually mating beetles. So what you do now, you keep your oats and your little pieces of cardboard for them to hide in and um, a few pieces of scrap orange and different types of vegetables. You wait about two weeks and these beetles will lay the entire two weeks and once they're done, um, once you're done with the two weeks, get one of these. This is just a cheap Betty Crocker strainer for like noodles and stuff. Um, anything with holes this size is good, especially for using oats. And all you have to do is scoop it inside the beetles with beetles and everything in there and shake it out into an external tub. And all the frass, and, which is poop, worms and beetles uh, will fall down through the strainer you then take your frass and leave it alone put a few bits of stalk or skin or whatever you have in there and leave it alone and sure enough if you wait about two weeks sometimes longer sometimes shorter you'll have what we just saw in the first clip with mealworms uh, thousands of little tiny mealworms coming out so it's pretty much simple as that. Now there's a reason I titled this video breeding mealworms is not a rocket science because it's it's really not if you want to go to the bare bones beginnings of it. Um, I notice a lot of people use the screen system which is basically a tub or container with some screen hot glued or taped to the bottom. You can even screw it which is what I'm gonna do next because I've had a lot of these break but um, I don't use that method anymore only because I don't feel as if you're getting every single egg, especially if you're using um, your oats as a substrate. Um, the beetles are going to lay on top of the oats and not even with them moving around on top of the screen, not all of the eggs are going to fall through. So to me, it's a little more straightforward. Um, you don't have to worry about making one of these, which I'm not saying this is a bad way to do it. This does work and it is uh, pretty efficient for what it is, but old fashioned way of doing it, you just get some beetles from your millworms after they pupate, um, put them in a bin, feed them, gotta feed them, feed them so they breed, take a strainer and shake it off in there and all the frass will have eggs. Uh, you'll get most of the eggs sifting it yourself. It may take a little more time, but in my opinion, it's worth it. And 
after that point, all you do is wait and you repeat the process until you have no more beetles, they die off, whatever. But um, that's the guaranteed way. Um, you may have a few problems you run into with the screen method. So if you're looking for an easy, 100% you're going to get mealworms um, by trying this method, then sifting it on your own is a good method, uh, especially if you're trying to get your own feeders. So anyway, that's about it for this video. Uh, I've actually noticed that I've gained some subscribers despite my hiatus of being gone. Uh, so thank you guys for subscribing. Thanks for commenting and asking questions. Uh, if you would like to see me do an updated collection video on my geckos, I um, plan on doing something like that. Otherwise, it's good to be back, but for right now, I'm going to go take care of my beetles and breed a bunch of mealworms because my geckos are hungry. Either way, hope you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching. One more thing, I um, didn't mention how you get beetles from your mealworms because there are plenty of great videos on YouTube that have already been done that tell you how to get your beetles. I'm just telling you the old-fashioned way to get the to get mealworms produced, to get you know guaranteed way to get mealworms. Um, feeders for your reptiles from breeding so if you want to know how to get your own beetles I will link a couple videos probably in my description um, of people telling you how to do that anyways that's it thanks